did, mate. We did. <laughs>
So we've got some super light gear on, Robbie. Well, I have anyway. What, what, what is it? So one to five gram. One to five gram. Yeah. Which is about as light as you're gonna go, I'm guessing, for this sort of fishing. There we go. Yeah, a little one again. I'm guessing it's about a couple of ounces. <laughs> but, oh, <I> spat <laughs> it out. Just say so yeah. <laughs> so I brought it to the surface. So I cast it aside while this boat comes. So this rod, this one to five gram rod. Yeah. Um, when would you use this? You know, when, when would it typically be used? Oh, certainly um, for very light jigging situations. Like today, um, I think I've rigged you up on a four gram jig head, which in this wind and flow, it's just about light enough to get down there and stay in contact. But it's, it's absolutely perfect for that, really small spinners and spoons, like the nail spoons. Just just a lot of fun to play fish with. Yeah. It's just been attacked constantly as Laura's. But I think it's just tiny, tiny perch that aren't big enough to, well, just about big enough to inhale it. <laughs> oh, this little fella. Yeah, I think there's two ounces. On. There's certainly a few really small ones down here. Yeah, it's not. There must be a huge head of fish down here. Yeah, I suppose this this setup is perfect for the, for fish this size. Yeah, yeah, brilliant for like ultra light fishing. Just great way to spend a couple of hours and have a little bit of fun. Oh, there we go. Got That's on. a little fish. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Doubled up. There we are. Oh, I think yours is a lot bigger than mine. Oh, that's a nice <laughs> one. There we go on the 3D roach. Uh, one. <laughs> there we go. Nicely, guy. It isn't, it isn't too bad. About half a pound, isn't it yours? Oh, he's getting up there. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Tell you what we should do, we should drop back into that bay where it's just a little bit, um, a little bit calmer and slightly less in the boat traffic. Okay. In the meantime, I'll put bigger lure on. We just stopped, dropped downstream, haven't we, Ed? Because the boat traffic was fierce up there. Yeah, it's, it's really busy for saying it's middle of October. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've had plenty of action on that soft lure. So I've gone for the crankbait this time. So I'm hoping this might get me a better perch. So as far as I understand it, Rob, you sort of crank it down and then stop winding to let it float back up to the top. Not all the way to the top, um, just crank it down there and then give it a good pause. So, so wind it maybe a metre or two at a time and, and give it a stop. But, um, it takes, um, takes a little way just for them to get started. So it's a case of trial and error to work out how deep it's uh, grinding down to then does it yeah that's it he wants it to be getting reasonably close to the bottom yeah well it's certainly slowed the bites up I'm not getting pestered by uh, tiny little knocks and, uh, and nibbles of perch that can't quite fit the lure in its mouth yeah, hopefully it will single out a slightly bigger fish. Yeah, that'd be great if it can. I'm sure as soon as you put the plastic back on though, you'll have no, um, no shortage of perch. <laughs> so 
is that the way you go if you wanted to catch loads of small perch loads of one two four ounce perch you'd go on the little bits of plastic yeah small small ultra light plastics either fish on the drop shot or jiggle catch you plenty of fish once you locate them however your crankbaits and stuff like that are fantastic for locating the fish in the first place quite often big fish will fall out to them too okay Did you get the sort of bigger perch hanging around with the smaller perch? Or do you tend to find they're in shoals of similar sort of sizes? They're often not far behind, but the bigger perch tend to be more of a solitary fish um, hunting on their own. Okay. And I'm guessing they'd, they'd feed on the smaller perch? Yes. As well as the roach. Yeah, of course. So say a two, two pound perch, without any issues taking a one ounce maybe two ounce bait fish no problem at all really i mean they can quite happily eat a six inch or larger bait fish really at times when they're aggressive you, you, you need bigger lures like large twitch baits crank baits and jerk baits just to just to get them interested and keep them that way Great action on this low. You can feel it working all the way up to the rod to this. Uh, this braid certainly is quite sensitive. Right, let's have a few casts out the front of the boat. Okay, before you ever go that side, I'll swap this side. Okay. You getting any knocks at all this side? Yes, yeah. One quite a um, quite a selective lure, trying to sort out the um, the larger fish at the moment. Yeah. So I've gone for the um, 3D roach. It's very realistic profile. This is a little bit more bulkier than those small cannibal shads, so it should um, should pick out a better fish. Yeah. Seemed better back up there, didn't it? A lot better, yeah. There's yeah. still bait fish down here, is it? Yeah, plenty of bait fish, but um, I don't think we found a shell of perch. I haven't had any really good bites since we dropped back here. So I think we'll move quick. Just got to find the shoal and we'll, um, we'll get some fish. It's not what we came for, but a nice little pike on the gravity crank. It was my first or second cast, so it proves to me that this little fella and the perch that Robbie caught wants a bit more movement, so I'll persevere with the gravity crank so we can get some more. And hopefully a big perch. I'll put a little gravity crank on. Um, got quite an aggressive movement. I've gone for a yellowy colour. I think it's a fire tiger, uh, so it's nice and bright in this still water, but the aggressive movement of it and the rattle inside may help to, to let a perch hone in on it and, and snap out of aggression. Now, it worked for a pike early, a little jack pike early, but um, it'd be nice if it works for a big old perch. Yeah. 
here he comes. But yes, that's a nice um, two pounder right there. Let's steer him towards that net. Go on, Ed. Get him in. Whoa. Hold on, Robbie. There we go. Oh, he looks like an old boy as well, proper faded. Yeah, yeah, beautiful fish. Okay. Look at that, that's a beauty. So, what I did is I got the small cannibal shad kit that we showed earlier. The one which we were catching a lot of small perch the other day on. And I rigged it up on the drop shot setup. I just felt like I needed to slow the presentation right down to a crawl for these fish. They came across as very lethargic and there we go. It's ended up in this, this beauty right here and I should think he's around about the low two pound mark, um, some, somewhere close to 40 centimetres. <laughs> nice fish Robbie, well done Absolutely mate. beautiful fish. Let's pop that hook out there, so just a nice little drop shot hook. <laughs> it fell out it as out. easy as that. Okay, so while I set, while, while Ed had a play with the crankbaits, I'd had a go jigging and I had a couple of taps and bites, but nothing really positive. So what I thought we'd do is find things right down and go for a very light drop shot setup. Um, so we've got one of the new SG2 range rods here. It's a seven foot four, two to 12 gram drop shot, solid tip, ultra, ultra sensitive. And I've rigged up on 10 pound fluorocarbon, one of the cannibal shads from the XS kit with a little bit of elastic to give it a bit of spring and bounce back there. Gives the lure so much action and so much movement. It's a little trick some of my friends showed me a while back. Um, and I've been loving it. But as that did the trick, I'm going to hand this one over to Ed and see if he can catch himself a nice big one. That's very generous of you, Robbie. And I'll carry on with the jig. Well, one of those perch, the same size as the one you just added to be a PB for me, by a reasonable distance. So I guess I'll let this sink and then just work the rod high. That's it. it. Keep the rod tip nice and high. What you almost want to do is just bounce it on the spot. So just tap against the lure on the spot wind down twitch it forwards a couple of bounces and you, you want to keep a sort of flickery action yeah so it's making that yeah and then let it pause every now and then just settle it's a very slow technique for grinding out areas where you know there's fish and there could potentially be fish underneath them Yeah, it's good. Feeling like a perch? Yep. Lovely. Nice and steady, mate. Fantastic. So you've just switched back to the crank rod, have you? Yeah. Um, I couldn't. Yeah, drop shotting's not natural to me. I like to cover <laughs> a bit more water. Um, well, that's looking more like a pike all of a sudden. Yeah, it is. It put up a lot of, put up a big old uh, disturbance there. Yeah, it's a pike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A bit bigger than the last pike, I suppose. Yeah. A pike, nevertheless. Oh. oh, not what I was after, but a nice little pike to show that the cramp baits work. There we go. Go on, mate. Giving me a good battle on this um, perch here. There we go, perch fishing. <laughs> That's, um... Got him. 
That's perch fishing right there. <laughs> Lovely little pike. Nice one, Robbie. Nice bit of fun. It's a lovely perch. Oh yes. Um, Just what I was after. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. oh the small net's fine, Ed. Is it? Yeah, we'll get him in the pan. Oh yeah, we're oh, yeah, going to lose him. He's uh, definitely a good two pound, if not near three pound. Oh, yes, that's what we're well, going for, for, mate. We did, mate, we did. <laughs> yes. Fantastic, that is an absolute beauty. I think we should get the new Savage Measure roll out on that. I think we should 100%. There we go. So we've had um, we've had a day trying to catch these perch and we've had plenty of smaller ones earlier on the main river and we've just drip, dropped back um, to our cabin and this absolute beauty's turned up. And um, it's gone for a lure that we've fished most of the day. And that is the fantastic little 3D LB roach. One of my absolute favourites, this one. It's such a realistic bait fish imitation. And earlier on, we were talking about that and how it would single out a better fish. And there we are, the proof's in the pudding. Cracky fish, that Robbie. Nice and full as well. Absolutely beautiful perch. I mean, it's definitely over the two pound mark. So we'll we'll pop the hook out and just give it a quick wait, and then slip her back. Fantastic. <laughs> lovely, lovely fish. Very thick set, broad on the back. <laughs> I love that sight. Well, it's dark now. I can't see anything apart from the lights behind me and the lights coming from the boat. So I don't think the perch have got any chance of seeing these laws. Uh, and if we did catch one, it's going to be very difficult to film. So I think that's it. Um, I didn't get my PB perch, but um, I certainly saw you catching up a couple of absolute crackers. Yeah, yeah, we um, we got a few good ones in the end. I mean, you certainly um, got a good feel for it when we were on the river fishing for those numbers of perch. You caught them on quite a few different techniques. You had them on the jig, you had them on the cranks, on the mm. spin tails. Um, but it has been hard back here. It, it's early in the season. There's not a lot of fish here yet. And we've had to really sort of dig around, search on the sonar and, and, and really hunt for for fish in very localised little areas. Um, mm. But all in all, we've managed to cover a lot of bases. Um, we've used a wide range of rods, a wide, wide, wide range of techniques, so say crank baiting, spin tails, we've done some jigging, we've done some drop shotting. And um, overall, it's um, not a session to grumble at with a couple of belters. No, 100%, and it's, it's for me, it's about learning what to do with each law. Um, you know, the, the, the setup for a drop shotting kit, you know, um, from the weight of the rod to the size of the reel to to techniques and, and you know how to how to work them and you know the same with the cranks and the jigs and the spin tails and, and everything like that so for me now you know if I want to go out and do a bit of um, perch fishing on my own I've got a better basis to go and do it you know it's 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 been a while since I've, I've gone out and targeted perch properly um, you know and I've, I take the kids fishing every now and then we do a bit of spinning and they, they love it catching jacks and small perch but now I feel a bit more confident and uh, you know I'm not I'm doing a little bit more so yeah, I didn't catch any PB, but um, I saw a couple of great fish on the bank from you. Um, we had quite a few small fish, and um, yeah, it was great to get out for a couple of days and, uh, and, and, and catch a few fish. So yeah, yeah. It, was, it was awesome, mate. Yeah, cheers for bringing us out, mate, and cheers for teaching us a few things. And it's um, yeah, it's been a good learning curve and uh, been enjoyable. Awesome, mate. Cheers, buddy. Let's head in. <laughs>